the last episode, we talked about leaf propagation, advanced techniques involving flower stalks. And in this episode, we are going to... We interrupt this program for a special announcement. Look what I've got. If for some reason you haven't seen the title yet, then I'll show you how this happened. And that brings us back to here. If you've been watching my series, then you'd know which plants are mine. I'll give you a chance to guess. So my mom-in-law got some cacti to add into her collection. And you see them here. And of course, this larger tray here with all of these echeverias are mine. So. Let's set them up on the table so we could have a better look. As you can see here, most of these plants are from Succulents Australia. Some of these are from RNT Succulents. The rest, I'm not really sure. I didn't catch their names. But in any case, I went crazy with my cash. As a quick head count here, one, two, three, 26. There's a total of 26 plants in here. One of them is large, the other's not so large. I would even go as far as calling them pups, although they, are, they look to be past the pup stage. As you can tell, I got this from the annual show and sale organized by the Cactus and Succulent Society of Australia here in Victoria. Let's start with this side right here. This is an Echeveria morning light and if you've been following my page and my Instagram, I've shown you one large and one small specimen of the morning light. This one in terms of size is somewhere in between the two of those. And it does look like this is uh, more established because I can see a few pups growing underneath. So maybe it has been, it, it shrunk a little during winter. This is quite common with the Echeverias. They tend to shed their leaves from underneath and they won't grow new leaves until after winter, maybe towards the middle of the spring. I think they need the momentum of the temperature to get warmer. Early on into spring, it's still quite cold and they need a bit of heat to trigger uh, their growing period. In any case, this is more orange-pink compared to the last one that I got and much larger than my first one. Next one here are three Kante Pops. I, I just love Kante. so. I decided to get three. I think there were more there, but they were hiding it. At the time I went to the stall, they only had three in display. But I think they had more because I saw other people carrying more cantes. So I think they were just, uh, I think they were trying to limit the number of cantes people were getting, I guess. So, cante. I got a large one out there, it's somewhere in the Patreon shrine. I've got more little ones. Now, a lot of these Echeverias are those that I don't have in my collection yet. And as such, I'm just going to read the tags that came with them. I'm going to take, with, take it with a grain of salt. Because sometimes these are not so accurate. So for now, let's just go with the labels that they came with. And I'll do my fact checking, my double checking after this video. So the next one is an Echeveria tolimanensis. It has 
thick leaves, slender leaves, and at first glance, one might think that this might not be an Echeveria. Maybe this is a Pachyveria or uh, something hybrid with something else. But if you look at the flowers, this is definitely Echeveria flowers. Bell-shaped, the sepals are not covering the petals. And does not open as a star shape. So, yep, definitely an Echeveria. And the name here, before I forget, uh, it says here this is an Echeveria tolimanensis and I'm going to check on it later. This is an Echeveria hegiana. I'm pretty sure the hegiana is a hybrid of Derenbergii. Um, I just can't remember with what. I remember coming across uh, the information on this relatively recently. Because I was reading into the Derenbergii hybrids a lot recently for some reason. So, hegiana. Still quite small but it's pushing out lots of flower stalks which means that I could be harvesting the leaves for propagation pretty soon. Now the next ones here are actually doubles. I've got two specimens and I got it mainly because they seem to be offsetting a lot and you know I could use this in swaps you know. I think only a few people have this right now unless they also bought from the sale but in any case pops Swaps. Those two were right. As for the name, it comes with the label of Echeveria prunella. And I have yet to do my research to see uh, what the parentage is or if there's any information about this at all online. But I like how it looks. It has a dainty farina on the leaves, light colored. It looks so precious. So, yeah. A theme that I found myself getting into today was that I was looking into a lot of topsy-turvy hybrids and from here I can see one, two, three, four, four of them, actually five. So five, six, I better do a recount. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, maybe five, I'm not sure if this is a topsy-turvy hybrid, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the five are. Let me show you them one by one. So the first is Echeveria Pinwheel Revolution. I'm pretty sure this is one of the newer hybrids because I've, I've seen this starting to come up uh, relatively recently. I think, I think I first heard of the name last year. I only jumped on the bandwagon now because uh, the prices have gone down a bit. Last year, I remember they, would, they were going out for over 30 or 40 and in the show I got this for 16 so yeah it's gone down quite a bit. Echeveria Pinwheel Revolution. The second one is Echeveria Exotic. I used to have an exotic somewhere here but for some reason it didn't make it through winter. It uh, succumbed to rot so I had to replace it and this is an exotic. The exotic is a hybrid between the Echeveria topsy-turvy and the Echeveria lawi. This would explain the upturned leaves as well as the thick leaves and thick farina on those leaves. So it definitely got something from both parents. Exotic. Next is an Echeveria swan lake. It looks like another uh, topsy-turvy hybrid but I'm not sure what the parents are. Well, I'm not sure what the other parent is. And yeah, looking pretty nice. Echeveria Swan Lake. Now this one, pretty peculiar. I haven't seen this name before. The first time encountering this name. Rather exotic name. Echeveria Fly to the Sky. Is this a Korean hybrid? I don't know. Definitely sounds like something imported because I haven't seen this locally before. But yeah, might be. Fly to the sky. Now this one, this is what I, this is actually the first one that I picked in the show. This is a hybrid from the Volar Nursery in Taiwan. It comes with the name Echeveria Dark Vader. Although in Asia, it's better known as Darkness Power. You might have seen recent photos of it circulating online. It has this very nice upturned shape. Then imagine this plant much bigger with these types of leaves all the way from top to bottom. That's how it looks like. It looks like it has all of these corrugations. 
I can't wait to see how big this grows by the end of summer. But before that, I have to be very careful with this one because if you look closely, the stem, the main stem in the middle, it's very pale, uh, pale green. It doesn't look mature yet, which means that there's a good chance that this will rot if I'm not too careful. So I'll play it by the ear and uh, lay more onto the dry side than the wet side. At least, at least until I see it moving along, you know? So for now, I'll be very careful with this and I'll put it right in this pile. So those five were the hybrids based on Topsy Turvy. This next one is another Volarchi creation. Echeveria Fantastic Fountain. Yeah, I think I jumped the bandwagon pretty early but ah, I already spent the money. I can take this back now. Also, I don't feel so bad about this purchase now because I can see a few pups growing at the bottom. There's one and two, maybe even three. Yeah, I'll just say two for now. So I, that means that I have three plants for the price of one. Not bad. I didn't get to bring home much freely, so I'm pretty happy that at least I found one there. Because for some reason, uh, Succulents Australia didn't bring their freely collection to the show today and I would have to visit their nursery to get the prints. I was hoping to get a lot of freelies, but this is what they brought. But it doesn't matter because this ones I don't have yet and I really like to add this to my collection. Anyway, this is a cultivar or a hybrid based on the Shabayana and the nickname is Hime. And pulling from my prior knowledge of watching Japanese anime, Hime or Hime means princess so this is a shabayana cultivar or hybrid called princess or hime definitely looks a lot different from my other shabayanas because i have uh, truffles out there i used to have uh, frills i think yeah i think it was frills but i've already seen the frills before but i haven't bought it yet because at the time it was expensive I only have the truffles for comparison, but at least I have a different kind of Shabayana now. Knowing Succulents Australia, I am not confident that this is a pure Shabayana. This might not be a cultivar. This might be a hybrid with a Shabayana and another parent. I think it's more safe to say that. So I'll just go with Echeveria Hime rather than Echeveria Shabayana Hime. No? I'm just taking a look at the stem. It seems to be more established than the Dark Vader, so I'm putting it in this pile. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering, I'm creating two piles here. This pile at the back is where the plants, I've, I've inspected the plants, the undersides, the stems, to see if they are a bit um, barky or... As long as they're not pure green, you know, like the very uh, young stems. If I see young stems and I place them here, this is just my personal opinion, but I think plants with green stems or very pale stems require a lot more care or babysitting compared to the others which have barky or... I'm not sure what to call it, but I'm just going with barky. Because if you look at this morning light, for example, and if you compare against this one, I think you'll clearly see the difference. So, yeah. So basically, I create two separate piles. So this pile would be placed somewhere where they could get milder treatment or less sunlight, I guess. Basically, this, are, this would have training wheels. This one's, I can be rough with them. So, two piles, and I have to be sure. Let's call this the Seriska Page two pile sorting method. C2PSM. Yeah, <laughs> let's make that a thing. Up next is this Echeveria Lemon and Lime. When I saw this from afar, I thought this was an Echeveria Golden Go, which I have right here, and which I also used this in my previous episode for the demo on leaf propagation. But when I look closer, yeah, it does look a bit different. 
and they were also selling a golden glow and I compared the two yeah they definitely look different so the differences are subtle but if you put them side by side you could clearly see um, one thing that I noticed is that the lemon and lime tends to tends towards the green or the blue green side of the spectrum while the golden glow is more limey more yellow compared to this at least that's my first impressions of the two so yep Echeveria lemon and lime just looking at the stem it's green this next one is another frilly I've been after this for quite a while now and I keep getting uh, every time I see something that looks like this I would think it is a gun sign but it turns out that it is a Shabayana or something else anyway it's a very gun sign it might be a hybrid based on Shabayana but I'm not sure what it's mixed with and it has this distinct look so yeah I finally got it and the price is not so bad just eight dollars Just checking the stem now. It looks rather established. In this pan you go. I'm pretty intrigued with this one. This is an Echeveria Raiga or Riga. I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is, but I'll go with Raiga. Like a taiga. Yeah, I choose to say Raiga because it has these marks and it reminds me of a taiga. Ah. It seems to be pushing out the flower stock as you can see here so once it comes out I'll be able to verify against uh, other plants online just to see if the name is correct but in any case I really like the specs I don't have a clear view of the stem but it feels rather yeah, the whole rosette feels hard which means that it is established so I'm going to place this in this pile the established pile Echeveria Lara. No idea of the parentage, but it's a small rosette. It looks nice. Might be based on Seconda, but no idea. No idea right now. Doesn't ring a bell. So yeah, Echeveria Lara. Stem. It's not green. It's going here. Echeveria Bambino. Another of the white Echeverias that I saw. And I got there's a certain beauty to this type, you know. So I wonder how this looks like when it's bigger. Because compared to something like this, this is a white one. The leaf density is different. The leaf shape is also a bit different. So I'm pretty curious what this one would end up looking like as it matures. But anyway, I'm just having a look at the stem now. It looks like the stem is more established, so this pile. White one, I got a white one in the previous show. No, not in the previous show, but was it in the previous show? Anyway, I knew I know I got a white one before, but the problem is my previous white one one uh, developed rot along the stem and I think it was because it should have been in a pile like this rather than in this type of pile so I've been treating this I've been treating the previous one as if it was one of these when it should be one of these so yeah I can't see underneath this but I know for the fact that uh, the previous white one white one one that I got before is a lot smaller than this which means that it wasn't as mature as this one this seems to be mature Rosette is too dense, there's lots of leaves. I'm checking the firmness of the lower leaves. It's quite firm, the root ball seems, seems to be quite extensive. So I'm placing it in this pile and I hope I'm right this time. Another Echeveria, it says here Hyalina, but for some reason, I think there's a Graptoveria Hyalina. Grato Hayalina, Mr. Grato Hayalina. Grato Hayalina, Mr. Grato Hayalina. Mr. Grato Hayalina! Hayalina, it looks like a Halbingeri to me. 
It might be a hybrid based on Halbingeri and that would explain the size and the way the offset looks. Hialina, not entirely sure it's an Echeveria but let's go with the name for now. I can't see the tag, I can't see the stem underneath but seeing that it is mature enough to push out some pups then I know that I can place this in this pile. There you go. Another that comes with a rather funky name. This is an Echeveria Snow Bunny. I have no idea what the parents are again. I'd have to wait for this to flower. It's starting to push out the flower stalk so once that comes out and once the flowers appear that would give me at least a clue what the species involved here would be. So I could just compare it against similar looking species. And apart from that, I have no idea where the snow bunny comes from. I'm trying to have a look at the stem. I have no clear view of the stem, but seeing that it has a flower stalk tells me that it is mature enough and that it should go into this pile. So, into this pile you go. Now, I can't believe that I haven't gotten a I've been checking my collection recently and I can't believe that I haven't got Cuspidata uh, Zaragoza before. So I made sure that I got one from the show today. And yeah, lucky I found one there. This one seems to be pushing out a few pups. I count at least four. There might be five, but four are visible. So that plus it has some flower stalks here. This tells me that the, uh, the stem is mature and that it should go in this pile as well. And the last two are obligatory Agavoidis hybrids. I'm pretty sure that these two are not varieties, cultivars, or forms of the base Agavoidis species. Because from the leaf shape alone, these are definitely not Agavoidis, especially this one. But knowing how many nurseries and vendors name their Echeveria, they just tend to add or name drop one of the species in there just to give people an idea where it came from so, it, so let's start with this one it says Echeveria agavoidis caterina okay so there might be an agavoidis in there but I would drop the agavoidis part here and just call it Echeveria caterina it might be similar to the Mira I am not sure what it has been hybridized with so yeah let's leave it at that I'm looking at the stem now, it looks really pale, so this one has to go in this pile. Hmm. And finally, Echeveria agavoidis blue moon. Again, like this one, I would drop the agavoidis in this name and just call it Echeveria blue moon. And I'm looking at, trying to look at the stem. Yeah, it's pretty pale as well, so this pile. I've got all of them sorted now. These ones are more established. These ones would need a little bit more care. So I'm going to place these two groups in separate locations. This one should probably be by the eaves, like somewhere here, where they could be getting morning sun but not afternoon sun. This one could be somewhere more harsh than this. So I could be more lax with where I could where I should put this. And luckily most of them except for the Raiga has a light color which means that they would be able to tolerate the sun more than this one. This one simply means that it would be absorbing the heat rather than reflecting it compared to the lighter Farina ones. So I might have to be careful with this one. In fact, maybe I should just add it into this pile. So there's now an additional criteria for the Siriska Page 2 pile sorting method. So for this pile, it should contain plants that have either very pale stems or very young looking stems, stems that are not yet barky, and dark plants especially when they're this young, and especially when you're about to head into summer. Because they would not be able to protect themselves from intense heat as much as the lighter ones right here. That's the same reason why the Black Prince, despite being dark, would have a hard time under the harsh sun 
Same thing with Affinis or the Black Knight, if you're more familiar with it, with that name. I've learned this the hard way, so I'm now keeping my Black Prince and Black Knight in a spot where they would be getting morning and overhead sun, not, not so much of the afternoon sun. That means I have to give similar growing conditions to this pile. Well, this pile can go wherever. Of course, I would need to give all of them a trial period, um, an adjustment period. Especially since they have traveled to get to the show, which means that they had been maybe stuck in a dark crate for God knows how long. So, adjustment phase. Then after the adjustment phase, that's when I start easing them into their final spots. Yeah. So these are the plants that I brought home. A bunch of Echeverias. Although I have a feeling that at least one of them is mislabeled and it's not an Echeveria. It might be a Graptoveria. But I don't know. I didn't I wasn't tempted to look them up yet. I just decided to go and read their names right away. And I find myself here now. That's it for my succulent haul so far. There's still another day to go through. And in the next episode I'm going to show you the 2018 succulent show. I'm going to do a better job compared to last year covering it. I'm going to show you the categories, the entries, and the winning entries. And I'll be publishing that video as part of the Let's Plant series right after this one. Which means that you'll have to wait one week after this episode comes out. So if you don't want to miss it, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, like and follow my page. That way you won't miss it. I might even use the premiere function for the Succulent Show because I think I need to build anticipation for this. It's probably going to be a lengthy episode depending on how many plants and categories there are. I'm pretty sure there's lots of plants so it might really be a long episode. I think I'll be lucky to be able to keep it 15 minutes or below. But I have a feeling that I'll be going over 20 for that one. But we'll see. In any case, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Camila Baez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledged on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram that's at SeriscaPage and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.